All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about SQA1, uh, which is the zero product property. Now the zero product property is something that's relatively easy to understand for a lot of students um, because it's something we've been kind of using all along. Now this is what the zero product property says. The zero product property says that if you have two things that are multiplied together and they equal zero, the only way that that can happen is if either a is equal to zero or if B is equal to zero. If that's not the case, then you're never going to get two things that multiply together to equal zero. So for example, if I had three times two, that's going to give me six, right? It doesn't meet the zero product property because of the fact neither one of these are zeros. But as soon as I change one of them to a zero, then notice how three times zero is equal to zero. Now, even if I were to sit there and switch the positions, zero times three, hey, that still equals zero. And basically, even if it was zero times zero, that's the only other time I can get something that multiplies to equal zero. So that becomes kind of important for us. So that's what the zero product property tells us, but this is how we use it. In this situation, this is a factored quadratic. So we just spent the whole last chapter talking about how we factor quadratics. This is one that's already been factored for us. The reason why we like to factor is because factoring takes an addition problem and it turns it into a multiplication problem. And in fact, these two ideas, the green one and the orange one, are being multiplied together. And if you notice, in this situation, they equal zero. So since we have two things that are being multiplied together and they equal zero, this can only happen if whatever x gets plugged in makes this whole term equals to zero or whatever x gets plugged in makes this whole term equal to zero. So in order to solve this equation, we're trying to find the x that makes this true. What you wanna do is you're gonna take each of these two parts, x minus two, and you're gonna set it equal to zero. So that's gonna be our first equation and our other equation will be x plus three equals zero. And to find the x's that satisfy this, you're just going to solve. So you're gonna add two to both sides and we'll find out x equals a positive two. And you're gonna subtract three from both sides and you'll find out x equals negative three. And it turns out that these are going to be the two answers that we have to this problem. Now it's very important in math to go back and check our work, so let's just try this. So if I take two and I plug it in, I'm gonna have two take away two, that's gonna give me zero. And then I would have two plus three, which would give me five. So zero times five equals zero, and it's like, yup, of course that's true. Now if you plug in negative three, negative three take away two would give you a negative five here, and then negative three plus three gives us zero. So negative five times zero equals zero, absolutely, right? So we found our two answers that satisfy this and make this work. Now, again, this happens because these two things are being multiplied together. So here's another problem. And actually this one is a zero product property too because we have this first term that's being multiplied by this second term and they equal zero. The equaling zero is kind of the important part here. So what you wanna do to solve this is you're gonna take each of the parts that are being multiplied, so three X and you're gonna set it equal to zero and then X minus five equals zero and your job is just to solve. So we're gonna start by dividing both sides by three these two cancel off, zero divided by three is zero. And then on the other side, to get x alone, I need to add five to both sides. So I'll get x equals five, just like that. And we got our two answers. Let's keep going with this. Now in this situation, we see that we have three things being multiplied together, four, x minus one, and x minus nine. Now in this situation, four does not have an x attached to it. Up here, three had the x, which is why it was possible that that term could be equal to zero. But since four doesn't have an x, it's never going to change. It's a constant term. So we don't need to worry about it. So we're just gonna take x minus one and set it equal to zero, and x minus nine and set it equal to zero, and then we're going to solve. Add one to both sides, x equals one. On the other side, <coughs> excuse me, add nine to both sides, and I'm gonna get x equals nine. And we'll get our two answers that we need for today. 
Moving on to problem number seven. Again, we have two things that are being multiplied and they equal zero. So just set up two separate equations. 3x equals zero and 2x plus five equals zero and then solve each equation. So for the first one, we're gonna start by adding two to both sides. I'll get 3x is equal to a positive two and then I'm gonna divide by three and divide by three and we find out x is equal to two thirds. On the other equation, subtract five from both sides. I get two x is equal to a negative five, divide by two and divide by two, and we find out x is equal to a negative five halves. Just like that. Now let's look at problem number nine. This is where we're gonna kind of change up what we're doing, but this is a zero product property. Now in problem number nine, what we're gonna have to do first is factor. So they tell us right off the bat to factor out the greatest common factor and then to solve each quadratic equation. So this is where factoring doesn't become the actual task that we're being asked to do, it actually becomes part of the process. So out of five and 15, I can pull out a five. This one has two X's, this one has one, so I can pull out one X. Five divided by five is gonna leave us with one. If I started with two x's and I pulled out one x, I would be left with one x. 15 divided by five is gonna give us three. I started with one x, I pulled out one x, so I don't have any x's left. Now, the reason we do that is because once we do, that turns this into a multiplication problem that equals zero. So we can solve this by setting up two separate equations. So five x equals zero and one x plus three equals zero. To solve the first one, we're just gonna start by divide by five and divide by five. Zero divided by five is zero. On the other equation, we're gonna subtract three and subtract three, and we'll find out that one X is equal to negative three, which are our two answers. So when we do this, the first step is gonna to be to factor, and then after we factor, we are actually going to solve using the zero product property. Now, looking at this problem, this one's unique because we have x's on both sides of the equation. So the first thing we need to do is get our x's onto the same side. So I'm gonna subtract 8x from both sides. So I'll end up with 4x squared minus 8x. Now 8x take away 8x will give us zero, right? That equaling zero is very important here. At this point, you wanna look for your greatest common factor. So what goes into four and eight? Well four does, right? It's the biggest number. This one had two X's and this one had one X. We can only take out as many as the one with the fewest. So we're gonna be able to pull out four X. That's gonna leave us with one X here and then a minus two over here, equaling zero. Once you get this far, now it's your job to solve. That's what the task is. So you're gonna set it up and say four X equals zero and x minus two equals zero. And then you just wanna solve. Divide by four, divide by four, x equals zero. On the other one, add two, add two, x equals two. And you got your answer. Now let's look at problem number 13. Now this one just says to factor and solve each equation. So hopefully at this point you look at this and you say, well, this is one of those factoring where I use the X. So we're gonna use the X here again to factor. Remember, when we do that, we say one times negative 18, that gives us the top, positive three becomes the bottom. Then we have AC, A in this case is one, so one X and one X. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 18 that add to give us three. Hopefully you've gotten a lot of practice in at this point and can look at that and say that this must be a positive six and a negative three. Once you get your, or get that far, we always check to see if we can reduce the sides, which we can't. So we'll get one X plus six and one X minus three. And that's still gonna be equal to zero because the original was equal to zero. All we did was rewrite um, that first part. Now at this point, our job is to solve, ladies and gentlemen. That means find the X's that make this true. So we set up our two separate equations. X plus six is equal to zero, and X minus three is equal to zero. 
Notice how I didn't have to put in the one there, right? One X, that's kind of redundant. If we only see one X, we only have one. So subtract six from both sides, X equals negative six. Add three to both sides, X equals three. Nice job. Let's look at the next one, number 15. Looks like we just have a couple left. So when we do this, we can't factor unless it's equal to zero. So we need to move 44 over to the other side using inverse operations. So that's gonna give me x squared minus 15x plus 44 equals zero. Now to solve this one, again, we need to factor. So one times 44 leaves us with a positive 44 up top we'll get a negative 15 on the bottom. We'll have 1x and 1x over over. And now we need to think, what numbers multiply to give us 44? The first one that comes to my mind is 4 and 11. So let's see if we can make that work. Right now, 4 and 11 don't multiply to give me positive, or they do multiply to give me a positive 44, but they don't multiply or add to give us a negative 15. Remember, there's two ways to get a positive 44. Either both of the numbers were positive or both of the numbers were negative. So negative four times negative 11 would equal positive 44. Negative four plus negative 11 would equal a positive 15. Since neither of our factors reduce, our first one will be one X minus four, and our other one will be one X minus 11. And of course that's equal to zero because all we did was rewrite the first part. So we're going to set up our two separate equations, x minus 4 equals 0, and x minus 11 equals 0. Add 4, add 4, x equals 4. Add 11, add 11, x equals 11, and we are done. Looking at number nine, or 17. Now number 17 is a little strange, and I'll show you why. It's because your middle term is missing. Right? We don't have the 0x that we're used to seeing in there. Now once we put that in, everything should continue on normally. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply. Right, Since those two multiply, 9 times 4 will be negative 36, and we'll have a 0 on the bottom. This will be 9x and 9x. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us a negative 36 that add to give us 0. Well, how about positive six and negative six? That works for the top and it works for the bottom. So once we get this far, now we just need to reduce if possible. This can reduce to be three over two and this will be the same. So my final factored answer will be three X plus two and three X minus two, equaling zero, just like the original. Once you get to this point, you need to solve. So you're gonna have three X plus two equals zero, and then three X minus two equals zero. If we solve the one on the left first, our first step will be to minus two from both sides. I'll get three X is equal to a negative two. I'll divide by negative three, and I'll find out X is equal to a negative two thirds. On the other side, I'm gonna start by adding two. It's gonna leave me with three X is equal to a positive two, and then I'm gonna divide by three and divide by three, and X ends up being equal to two thirds. Nice job. Let's do our last problem. Here's our last one, number 19. Now number 19 looks kind of normal on the surface, but you gotta realize one thing. If there's a negative in there, that's gonna cause all sorts of trouble when we try to factor. So what we need to do is to divide the negative out. So if I pull negative one out of each of those terms, that will make this into a positive, it will make this into a negative, and it will make this into a negative. Basically, pulling out the negative one just changes the sign on everything else. And that's gonna be equal to zero. Now, this is something that we know how to factor. So one times negative 22 puts negative 22 up top, and then we'll get a negative nine on the bottom two numbers that multiply to give us um, negative 22 that add to give us negative nine are what we're gonna be looking for. So we'll have our one X and our one X over. 
two numbers that multiply. 22 I know would be 2 and 11, so maybe that will work. So 2 and 11. Now right now, they don't multiply to give us a negative, so we, one of them is going to have to be negative. I'm going to put it on the 11 since the number on the bottom is negative. So 2 times negative 11, that works there. And it also works here, nothing to reduce. So we can factor this to be 1x plus 2, since the 2 was positive, and 1x minus 11 equals 0. Now, we can't forget, we pulled out negative 1, so that negative 1 should really still be sitting in front of all of that. Because all we were doing is we were just rewriting this portion in factored form. So, coming over here, now it looks like we have three things that are being multiplied together to equal 0, but this one doesn't have an x, so we don't need to worry about it. So we're just going to take the ones with an x, 1x plus 2 equals 0, and 1x minus 11 equals 0, and now we just need to solve. Minus 2 minus 2, 1x equals a negative 2, which is the same as just x equals negative 2. And then on the other side, we're going to just add 11 to both sides, and I'll get x equals 11 as my answer. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it wasn't, please definitely let me know. Um, but that's going to be your process. Most of these problems are going to have like a carbon copy of them, a chance for you to practice right across. So I know we covered a lot, but hopefully if you use this video while you do your homework, you're going to see the similarities and hopefully this will go smooth. Again, if it doesn't, let me know. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.